Uh, back when that used to mean something. Bethesda Softworks presents The Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind. Oh man, this game, dude. Now this one's a classic. If there are some games that I've got an opinion on, this is one of them. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to set up recording with because it's so old that the resolution is not the size of anyone's computer anymore. And it's also ugly, not to mention dated. Ancient, in fact. Um, among other things. But it's still damn good, and I have a lot of things to say about it. So, I'm going to do one more cut just to fix my recording, and then we're going to dive right in. So that'll be just a moment. All right, and I think we're back. So, as I said, this is the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Um, of the trilogy, and I know it's completely reductive to say that the last, you know, most, three most recent games in a series are a trilogy, but um, of the trilogy, these are my favorite. This is my favorite of the three. This kicks Oblivion's ass. This is better than Skyrim. And I, uh, I also like it much better than Daggerfall and Arena, of what I've seen of those. And this game is quite a leap in advancement as well. Like, it works in a lot of ways. It's a good time capsule. It's a good piece about video game storytelling and telling stories in a video game. It's just very, very nice. So we're going to hit new, and I'm going to shut the hell up so you can hear the the game I lied each event is preceded by prophecy but without the hero there is no event in the waning years of the third era of Tamriel a prisoner born on a certain day to uncertain parents was set under guard without explanation of Morwood ignorant of the role he was to play in that nation's history taken you from the Imperial City's prison, first by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Many fall, but one remains. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? All right, first he's going to ask me my name, and then later he will ask me my sign. Not this guy, actually. A different guy. My wife begins rapping in the background. Um, now, I didn't actually think about this before I booted this up like an idiot. Let me see if I put something in my notes while I do that. This man is Jube. Yep. Yep. Um, his appearance, well, with the ears, the earrings, the scar, the beard, everything. Like, hell yeah, dude. Um, people were like, man, what's his story? Elder Scrolls is a gigantic shared story. Who the hell is this guy? You know, who is this dude? Um, so... He was later made a saint in Oblivion because he eradicated, I think, the Cliffrunners. 
And the cliff runners are a particularly um, fastidious, annoying flying enemy in this game. Uh, they suck because of a lot of things that we're going to start to see later on. Um, things that are so bad, I might install mods to take them out of the game. I know that that isn't the Mario 1 experience, but man, I've got some opinions about that. Um, anyway, he drove them into extinction and everyone said, hell yeah, Jew. So they made him a saint. And then in Skyrim, he shows up as a ghost in the Dongard DLC. And you have to find the manuscript for his novel or whatever. Something like that. Um, I'm going to be Juvors. Gnada. You can call me Juve for short. Maybe... No, perhaps I'll be... Hmm. Hey, welcome to playing role-playing games. If you think this is bad, wait until you see how long I take when I actually have to build a damn character. And they let you really get into it with this character. Hmm. I keep hitting the shift key to uh, capitalize the first letter of my name and then realizing that it doesn't matter because I can't think of a name anyway. Maybe I'll just key smash. Take a leaf out of my bottom friend's books and just... Pit... Pit's not bad. Pit turf. No, we can't be turf. Pet. Pet here. Red here. Red here. Red here. Gnadab. Return. You know that. You can call me Rat for short, bro. Ah. Uh, Rat. Turn. You know that. Um. Yeah, my name's Rat, bro. I'm basically the '50s Chad. Um, and then it's also got Tear in there, like the God of Justice. That guy's cool. Hell yeah, it's here. And also, N. A crucial letter when spelling lasagna. And then, that's what we're going to stand for, the last name. We're going to stand for Gnadab. Um, yeah, that's okay. Well, not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Here he comes. Look at that walk. Quiet. Here comes the guard. No, look at him. This is where you get off. Come with me. Now, proceed to the jizz rooms. Wiss moves forward and back. A&D, strafe, and the mouse looks around, as we've seen. You can also, I believe, hit R. You yep. better do what they say. You better do what they say. It'll be worse if you don't. They'll gas out the spreader. All right. All right. Oh, look at those bay rails. Look at those baskets. Those bottles, hell yeah. Ham hock. Get yourself up on deck and let's keep this as civil as possible. Look at the hatch and press E. Hey, dude. Yeah, it's a silt strider. These guys are cool. The giant fleas that they hollow the backs. Like, they literally dig the meat out of the back and then they use those as cars that's the noise they make um you can see some of the weird trees of Morrowind there's the impenetrable impenetrable infinite lake that forms the rest of the Elder Scrolls world that you cannot go this way um 
Other than that, there's some ramshackle buildings. This uh, is where they want you. Head down to the dock and I'll show you to the census office. Thanks, Red Guardman. Yeah, there's a lot of Imperials here, but I like the Red Guards. I like their you style. You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. I am from Cyrodiil. Um, my family moved there when uh, before I was born. Let me see here. Clean up there. Nice. So I can't actually get the face that I want, which is the face in the art. So you'll just have to use your imagination like I am. Um, that's kind of what I want. And then I need the biggest, blondest mohawk that they can give me. It's black mohawk, red mohawk. Black mohawk. Oh, Laura, that's it, huh? All right, that's it. Well, just use your imagination. But this is going to be me. Um, I'm going to be a dark elf. I know that that's the default one, but that's actually what I play in every Elder Scrolls and in a lot of tabletop RPGs, for that matter. Um, I'm fiddling with my mic. So it sound like I'm eating things because I'm a dumbass who didn't fix my mic before I started recording. Like, you know, a sensible person might. Um. How do I sound now? It makes it look good. Okay. Um, I pick Dark Elf all the time. Um, it's my go-to in games where Half Elf isn't an option. Um, look at him, they're dope. Uh, the fact that they get bonus stuff here because they're elves is dope. Um, and the ability, the fact that they resist fire in this game at seventy-five percent, which is just ridiculous. Um, that's hilarious. You know, it's the first. Let's take a look at the other ones. Argonian, they suck. Um, see, they're cool and all. The two genders are uh, head flap and um, upside down Santa hat, or what is that? Olympic medals. The face does not give you a whole lot, and the hair is that. Um, Argonians really, really suck in this game because they don't have the same type of feet as other classes. And you might, or other races rather. And you might say, well, that's a little, you know, whatever. So you can't equip boots, so you have to be barefoot. Um, it's real unfortunate. Uh, Khajiit, the cat people are the same way. And granted, it makes sense because they have, they're not humans. These aren't even mammals. They shouldn't be able to wear human boots. Just, you know, strip it off and put it on. You know, the, the thing of like, hey, I'm a big orc. I'll take this armor off this half leg and put it on my body right away. That's not how that works. These guys make kick ass rogues. Um, and uh, they actually make very interesting mages because they can breathe underwater and in this game can't get poisoned. Um, and then they get some okay mage stats. So illusion, mysticism, and unarmored. Breton. These guys are essentially half elves. Bretons hail from, I think, southwest of Skyrim. Um, they're what happens when high elves crossbreed with Nords and Imperials. Um, so they're kind of a witch species. They're more magical than any human, but they're definitely not elves. And so they have a bunch of bonus magicka. They resist magic, and they can protect themselves. High Elves, if you want to play a mage, pick this dude. Just every time, just pick a High Elf. Like, it sucks that no one can ever beat a High Elf at doing magic, but, like, that's their niche. That's what they fill. Elves' whole thing is that they are better at magic than the other classes, races. Again, sorry. Um, but that's just... Man, they really, really got it out. Like, they are so good. So let's look at all this. Weakness to magic. Weakness to fire, frost, and shock. Resist disease. Magic a bonus. A huge, huge just boon of magic. All of these can be overcome with potions temporarily, with spells uh, for a more permanent solution, or um, with armor. You can enchant armor and make it essentially permanent. So who cares? Imperials. Um, these are... So the difference between elves and humans in Elder Scrolls is that elves are all better mages and humans are all better warriors. The Imperials are 
kind of a different thing. Um, the mythology of the three is very important in Elder Scrolls, of the thief, the fighter, and the wizard. Um, you know, just very, very, very classical, like, RPG terms codified into a sort of religious mythology. Um, but in a lot of cases, you'll actually see a fourth added to the Trinity, the Trinity, excuse me, uh, and that's speaking, talking it out, charisma. And that's kind of where Imperials sit. Um, so they get Star of the West, which, you know, whatever, and Voice of the Emperor, they can charm the shit out of people. Um, hey, it's me, an Imperial. That's the same guy we're looking at. There he is, we found him. But yeah, um, normally the, the deal is that the beast races, Khajiit and Argonian, are rogues. Um, kind of dark elves as well. The rest of the elves make good mages. And then the humans and orcs are fighters. Khajiit. Um, same deal with the Argonians. They don't have the right feet, so they can't wear stuff. They get nigh, Eight of Nye. Oh, Lord. Um, forgive my dyslexia. They get Night... They get Eye of Night, which is an ability that gives them Night Eye. An Eye of Fear, they can scare people. Um, these guys are okay. You know, if you want to be a furry, I guess I can't stop you, although I wish I could. Nords are Viking humans. Like, these are the big, big old beef boys. Yeah, look at those. A lot of chunkmen. Uh, they're immune to frost in this game as opposed to being very resistant to it. And they're resistant to shock as well. They can uh, use Thunder Fist, which does frost damage. Which doesn't sound right. I mean, it's no chill touch, but that's pretty bad. And then they have Woad in this game, where they can just protect themselves some more. Um, if you want to make a tank, these, are, these guys are where you want to go. Because they get heavy armor, they get blunt weapon, long blade, axe, spear... They really much, they really get it all. Like, if you want to fight someone, these guys are pretty up there. Um, orcs are the other way to go. Because you can see armor, axe, block, heavy armor, and medium armor. If you want to just not take damage when you get hit, orcs, man. Uh, they resist spells, and they have berserk. So you can see that this is just a barbarian's rage. Um, very, very plain and simple. So, again, if you want to hit someone, orcs are how it be. Um, I highly recommend Orcs and Elder Scrolls. I think they're one of the coolest races. It's just unfortunate that they have to share the roster with Nords and Dark Elves. Red Guards. These are your, um, you know, fantasy black people, I guess. Um, they have one of the most interesting cultures, however, uh, and I really wish that we would get a mainline game set in a Red Guard controlled territory. There's a spinoff game that's just called Elder Scrolls Red Guard that is about a Red Guard man just going on an adventure. But like, oh man, I really hope that we just run around Red Guard controlled Hammerfell or like, hell, even if we go to where they're from. Um, they've got a really interesting... They've got one of the most interesting lores. Um... Almost all the humans aren't from here. Like, Imperials are actually descended from elven slaves from a different country. Nords are from the... I'm kind of lord dumbing here, but I assume that this is what you came here for. Um, Nords are from a northern continent called Atmora. And due to climate change, Atmora got so cold that it was completely uninhabitable. And you they couldn't live there so they all took a bunch of boat uh boats south and ended up in skyrim because it's the top of tamriel and red guards are kind of similar um red guard is what imperials thought their name was the actual name is ragada and it means warrior wave um they come from a like far away desert land their names are all, like, stock, like, how do I put this? Like, what writers think ghetto names are, like, they're all names like Demetrius, crossed with samurai names. So, there's a dude whose name is Gaiden Shinji. Um, 
Red guards are so cool. They get no play. They get almost nothing. Like, red guards do not deserve where they sit right now. They deserve to be, like, top of this list. Oh my god, red guards are so bad. Um, like, the whole thing, like, Nords left out Mora because it got too chilly. Red guards left Yokuda because they had to deal with all the snake vampires. That's a real thing. Look into it. Last one's Wood Elf. Who cares? Um, they are Tolkien-esque Wood Elves because in addition to all the other ones, they also get potions, bows and arrows, and sneaking around. So they're a little less magic, but they're a little more fight. And then they can talk to animals because they're just, you know... In the same way that um, you see D&D races typecast and stereotyped as classes, orcs are very much barbarians. These fellas are just very much fighters. These are just rangers. Um, with this ability, you can kind of argue that they are similar to barbarians, but they're almost like a dex fighter, you know? Um... These abilities are kind of useful, by the way, um, but only in the early game. You get stuff that makes this worthless, and then poison barely comes up anyway. But yeah, red guards are cool. Play red guard. If you want to fight something and you want to be fancy about it, dude, play red guard. It's super cool. Um, but like I said, we're going to go with the dark elf, and I've got to fix my ugly face back to where I think it was. Tube. It? It's one of those things where, like, it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to cover it up with a helmet within about 10 minutes. I think that was it. And then I had the black mohawk, and the gray mohawk. This does not look right on Dark Elf Head. That's a little weird. All right. All right, all right, all right. I think that this haircut. Oops, excuse me. I think this haircut is actually the canon one. That's what you see in the screenshots. Um, yeah, here we go. Hell yeah, that's my that's my boy. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office, and they'll finish your release. So he says I'll fit right in because Morrowind is the land of the dark elves, and I'm from here. Oh. Hey guys, so this is the walking speed. Let's just walk around in the circle so you can really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we don't have... Head on in. We don't have a stat screen yet. Um, we'll talk about that in a sec, though. Head on in. Yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. So, we can give him the info, we can fill out the forms, or we can answer questions from him. Um, the LP thing to do is to answer his questions, so I'm going to do that, but then I'm just going to pick the stats. On a egg. clear day, you chance upon a strange animal, its leg trapped in a hunter's claw snare. Judging from the bleeding, it will not survive long. What do you do? I would not interfere in the natural evolution of events, but take an opportunity to learn about a strange animal I've never seen before. One summer afternoon, your father gives you a choice of chores. What would you rather do? I would rather go catch fish at the stream with a net and line. Your cousin has given you a very embarrassing nickname, and even worse, likes to call you it in front of your friends. You have asked him to stop, but he finds it very amusing to watch you blush. What do you do? I would beat up my cousin and tell him if he ever calls me that nickname again, I will bloody him worse than this time. There is a lot of heated discussion at the local tavern over a group of people called telepaths. They've been hired by certain city-state kings. Rumor has it these telepaths read a person's mind and tell their lord whether a follower is telling the truth or not. You believe what? 
This is a terrible practice. A person's thoughts are his own, and no one, not even a king, has the right to make an invasion into another human's mind. That says human, but I'm not sure if that's actually correct. Your mother sends you to the market with a list of goods to buy. After you finish, you find that by mistake a shopkeeper has given you too much money back in exchange for one of the items. What do you do? I would pocket that extra dough because shopkeepers are charged people anyway. While in a marketplace, you witness a thief cut a purse from a noble. Even as he does so, the noble notices and calls for the city guards. In his haste to get away, the thief drops the purse near you. Surprisingly, no one seems to notice the bag of coins at your feet. What do you do? I would pick up the bag and pocket it, knowing that the extra windfall will help my family in times of trouble. Your father sends you on a task which you loathe, cleaning the stables. On the way there, pitchfork in hand, you run into your friend from the homestead near your own. He offers to do it for you, in return for a future favor of his choosing. What do you do? Um, I'm gullible, so I would accept his offer, reasoning that as long as the stables are clean, it matters not who does the cleaning. Your mother asks you to help fix the stove. While you're working, a very hot pipe slips its moorings and falls towards her. What do you do? Um... Hmm. I take the hit. While in town, the baker gives you a sweet roll. Delighted, you take it into an alley to enjoy, only to be intercepted by a gang of three other kids your age. The leader demands the sweet roll, or else he and his friends will beat you and take it. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I would stomp on the sweet roll and get ready for a fight. Entering town, you find that you are witness to a very well-dressed man running from a crowd. He screams to you for help. The crowd behind him seems very angry. What do you do? Bro, that is not my business. They reflect a rogue. That would make sense. Dark Elves actually... I didn't actually explain Dark Elves' niche. Um, Dark Elves don't have a niche. And that's my favorite way to play. Because, like I said, normally I play Half Elves. Because um, humans are too boring. But in this world, humans are actually more fight-oriented. Even Imperials. Um... Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? So, Dark Elves not having a niche means that they can really do almost anything. And if you spec your Dark Elf right in this game, you can do everything. Um, I might push myself to the max level. I might get everything to the max level. Um, so, there's only a couple things that you can actually pick here. And I'm not saying that like, oh, they block these out until you buy the DLC. No, there's just, there's only so many actually useful choices. This with a high elf makes you a nearly invincible mage. Because, hey, remember all those spells that you take damage, bonus damage from? You now absorb them. And it doubles your already massive magic. So... In addition to that, you don't regenerate magic. But you just have to wait to get hit first, and then you absorb it from other people. Let's see here. Uh, the Apprentice is also alright um, for mages. Lady's okay. Personality is kind of um, a poorly used stat, I would say. Uh, there's this thing that you can do where you balance out... Remember... For those of you who have played Skyrim, um, in the enchantments, you can set, like, how much soul power you want to burn through each hit. So, like, you can do 23 damage a swing, or... And, uh, 23 damage a swing, and, like, just burn through it in, like, 10 seconds. Or you can do an extra one damage, but, like, you'll have it for a couple hundred hits. Sp potions kind of work like that, but conversations all take place in the frozen time. Which means that you can make a potion with maximum power that only works for a second, drink it, and start a conversation immediately. And then in the frozen time, you can just talk your way out of nearly everything. So personality isn't great. Endurance is okay. 
And I like the idea of being under the lady. Um, the Lord. Weakness to fire. Because your troll can and brought up the north. Um, so it regenerates you. This is a classical Nord one, I think. A lot of Nords have this. Lover. Fortify agility. You get Lover's Kiss, where you can uh, stun people, basically. The Mage. More magic. This one's okay. Ritual. This is good if you're going to like roleplay a cleric. You get Turn Undead. Uh, and you can heal yourself. Serpent. This is rogues. You know, poisoning stuff. Shadow. This is another rogue one. Yeah, Invisibility for 60 seconds. The Steed. Fortify speed, 25 points. So, like I said, when I was talking about this, speed is very low in this game. And getting it up as high as possible is the only way that you can actually move yourself through the areas. Uh, the Thief. Akaviri Danger Sense. Um, I think Akaviri is another word for Yokudans. People of Yokudan descent. Um, Red Guards. Tower. Beggar's Nose. Detect Animal. Detect Enchantment. And Detect Key. And Tower Key. Open Locks. It's... This one is like, oh, I hate lock picking. I, uh, I'll just get this. Um, which is why it's not really useful, because if everything in this game was a lock, this would kick ass. Only, like, a couple of them are, though. And the warrior. Um, you just get better attack. So, I actually took notes for this LP, and let me see what I wanted. Um, 